Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 18 and verse 9. And while you're looking there, I'm going to... Uh, we're talking about a caution today about the decreeing and declaring message. Uh, a few years ago, I remember someone I know, I'm not going to mention names, but uh, someone I know that started decreeing and declaring and I was so shocked by what she said. She said, I decree and declare that I'm going to marry a rich man. I'm not marrying for love, I'm marrying for money. And I couldn't believe, I actually played this to our group at that time, uh, hard to believe that people have gotten into such ditches. But I want to try to bring a balanced message. And if you're doing this decreeing and declaring, it's because someone taught it to you. And, they, and I want to go through a couple of the scriptures that they use and just basically uh, the whole thing of prayer is no longer asking and, so, you know, and being thankful and humble. It's, it's now to a point of authority. People think they have this authority. So I just want to get into it right away because I have quite a bit to share. But this is an article that I found. I don't have the person's name and I'm only going to read parts of it as usual because it's too long. But it said, over the past few decades, the practice of decreeing and declaring has spread like wildfire. And it has. It's spread across every continent, every, everywhere. And this practice came from the Word of Faith movement and its emphasis on the power of words and the need for positive confessions in every sphere of the Christian's life. To declare is to state out loud a fact. And to decree is to issue an authoritative command. For proponents of this movement, they say that this is a powerful aid to prayer. And just an example of this, and the, this person here, I just pulled it out of some of the notes that I had. Uh, this is what they say. And this is bad. Don't do this, but this is what they say. It's great to be a child of God. You are blessed beyond measure. As a child of God, you can never be a victim of any form of circumstance in your life. Today, we're going to be engaging in decreeing and declare prayer points. God has given us authority over all devils in every circumstance. Whatever we don't want, we have the authority to reject it. Wouldn't that be nice? <clears throat> Whatever we don't want, we have the authority to reject it. And whatever we desire, we have the authority to bring it to pass. And then they use Mark eleven twenty three. of course, makes us understand that with our mouth, we can have whatever we say. And someone I used to run around with, a very famous national preacher, would always say, your answer's right under your nose. It's always leading to self. It's always leading, not to God, but to you. Uh, therefore, as you engage in this decree and declare prayer points today, whatever you decree and declare shall be your portion. And then they tack on in Jesus' name. And so this is, this is what's going around. It's a fad. It's not new. It's old. It's actually part of Gnosticism. Uh, it's understandable that people want to pray better, better. Decreeing and declaring invites people to picture the future they desire. Doesn't matter what God's will is. It's what you desire. And the examples of what people are preaching today in a lot of churches, this is what they say. What are you declaring today? What are you saying and confessing? Start declaring the end from the beginning. Start saying that what you want to happen instead of confessing your circumstances. And you'll see changes in your life. Start praying the solution instead of praying the problem. How many times have we heard that? The authority, this is another thing they're saying, a couple more things. The authority God has given his children is to have dominion and power over all things. We declare that lives are transformed and hopes are renewed. Do you know the power of decrees? The Bible was not created just to read. The word was meant to be spoken out loud every day over any circumstance you have going on that needs to be changed. So this puts you falsely in the driver's seat to never have anything bad happen to you? Let me ask you then, why are bad things happening? And why aren't they confessing over all these scandemics? And, I mean, <laughs> all the things that are going on, where's, where's all the power that they say they have? 
Um, there's no biblical support for decreeing and declaring. And they use th three main scriptures, and we're going to go through them very quickly, which ones they use. They use Romans 14, 17, calling those things which are not as though they were. Okay, the subject of this verse is God, not Abraham. As it is written, I have made thee, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Okay, that's the scripture. The subject of this verse is God. It's not Abraham. Paul is teaching about an attribute of God. Abraham did not have this ability. That's why he trusted God to call things into existence. Abraham never confessed nor decreed anything. God declared it and made it happen. So God declared Abraham he was going to be a father of many nations. That doesn't mean we can insert ourselves in that scripture and twist it to make it about us. Another one they use is Job twenty two twenty eight. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. Now this, the main question to ask about this statement is, who made it? It wasn't God, neither was it Job. It was a statement made by Elzaphaz, one of Job's friends. Elizaz, whatever his name is, words cannot be used as an instruction for good theology. <laughs> God issues a, a smoldering rebuke to his friends, and he says, you have not spoken of me what is right. This was not even a person that was walking in the right way or speaking the right way, so God's rebuke him, rebuking him. Elzaphaz misunderstood the ways of God, so he was reprimanded for his errors. Therefore, his words are, are unwise counsel. They cannot be used as an instruction for good theology. And the other one, they, they say, I will, I will declare the decree in Psalms 2.7. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. The psalmist is talking about a decree made by God. Yeah. Declare is actually a common word in the psalms meaning to proclaim. This verse is teaching us to proclaim God's decrees, not our own. We must tell others what God has said. David didn't decree it. This was talking about the king of kings and the Lord of lords. In Psalms 2, they were talking about the kings of the earth and how they're coming against the Lord and his anointed. But the Lord has a begotten son. He is the king. And that's what we declare. We declare Jesus is the Lord. He is the king of kings and Lord of lords. It's not about us taking anything we want, changing all our circumstances, and perverting this whole Bible to be about us. And then in Isaiah 45, 11, command, uh, concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Well, he's not telling us to command God. If you read this whole thing, the context of Isaiah 45 is God's plan for the nation of Israel to deliver them from Babylonian captivity. So in Isaiah 45, 11, will you command me concerning my children and the work of my hands? The implied answer is that nobody can command God. To think otherwise is a gross failure to understand who God really is. Right. So decreeing and declaring reduces prayer and it ridicules God. No, so none of the scriptures commonly cited in support of decreeing or declaring support the practice. When you understand each verse in its own context, who it's written to, who said it, what does it mean in their context? They actually reinforce God's sovereign power against the weakness of mankind. Prayer is like oxygen to a Christian, but to presumptuously command God insults him. And this thing too, it's putting God in a box and saying that if I decree this and I declare this and I command it, then God has to do it. It's like putting God in a box and telling God what he has to do. How did we get so far off track? Uh, and then the last part of this article is prayer isn't magic. And that's uh, one of the articles I read is, uh, that's kind of what they say. It's just like uh, magic, just like how you pull out abracadabra. You say this stuff, now I can relax. I've said it, the universe has to answer. That's not talking about God. That's making an impersonal God. And you make God out to be a genie. 
that you become the center of everything you want. So God is no genie and prayer isn't magic. We don't say open sesame, expecting God to answer every prayer or whim. To decree and declare is not how God wants us to pray. To pray this way is to dishonor God. May God allow us to learn how to pray in a way that honors him. And then we're going to go on to a little bit more of how, how to pray and what God really tells us to do. But decreeing and declaring is similar to the occult. And it's not new. It's new to a lot of Christians, but it's not new to other, new to other religions. Gnosticism is a cultic religion that mixes distorted elements of Christianity with mysticism. Positive thinking is in the medical it's not just in Christianity. It's in almost every field now. Everyone says, just be positive. And there's nothing wrong with being hopeful and, and not being negative, but to take it into such extremes. Um, but this is positive thinking in the medical, mental health fields, advanced education, in business and self-improvement secular fields. So this isn't just a spiritual thing. This is also very worldly and secular, and it's also used in the occult, and we're not supposed to be even a part of what the world does. Decreeing and declaring is a formula to get what someone wants, and they're being told, now that you say it, God has to do it. Just, take, just tack on the name of Jesus. Just tack on whatever you decree and declare in the name of Jesus. And then that's supposed to be the prayer. Well, first of all, to me, that's pride. And we're going to look in Luke 18. Let's look there right now. Luke 18 and verse 9. And he spoke this parable unto certain people which, what? Trusted in themselves. They're trusting in themselves. That they were righteous and despised others. Two men went into the temple to pray. They both say they're praying the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus, who do you pray with? Himself. This is what this reminds me of. We're praying with ourselves. We feel really good about ourselves. We built up our own self-esteem. We pray with ourselves, saying, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. And then he goes into all the stuff he does do. And it puts all the pressure back on you to do everything. I fast, I, I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all I possess, on and on and on. And then the publican standing afar off would not up so much lift up his eyes into heaven, but smote his breast saying, God be merciful unto me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So prayer is asking. We're going to get into a little bit about this. Um, if we Christians go around decreeing and declaring positive things over our lives the same way a magician says abracadabra or a cancer-stricken mind sciencer says, I am well, I am well, we sound just like the world. We sound just like all the other, the occults, the, the other religions. Uh, Abracadabra is very similar to you have what you say. Mentality of the doctrine of decreeing and declaring. The Gnostics and the metaphysical ideas of power to bring things into existence. And what's that power? It's not the Lord. It's your words. So you really don't need God if you have the decreeing and declaring. According to these doctrines and formulas, you have that power within yourself. You're praying with yourself. I hope this is, is this getting clear? The challenge with decreeing is that this is not the way Jesus teaches us to pray. And it's not the way we get answers to prayer. The key to prayer is not decreeing and declaring. It's asking and believing. Asking and believing. Uh, Matthew 6, 7 through 8. And when you pray... I'm going to use another translation for a second. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. King James says, and when you pray, do not keep on 
vain repetitions like the heathens do. For they think they will be heard because of their many words or their much sayings. Do not be like them. For your Father in heaven knows what you need before you ask him. But we still are supposed to ask, right? Repeatedly through the Bible, we see God encouraging us to ask in prayer, not decree. Decreeing puts the burden on us to cause it to happen, while asking puts the burden on God to bring it to pass. Totally a different shift. Yep. What God wants is us to put our trust and faith in him to bring it to pass. Little by little, you can see more and more people are leaning away from really trusting and believing in God. And in, he says here, he said, will I even find faith on the earth? When he returns, will he find faith on the earth? True faith in him? Because we see so much humanism. We so, see so much witchcraft and occultism. Uh, too often in the decree and declare world, they put the power in the words they decree. There should never be faith put in our words, but put in God who can answer prayer. The focus is different. The words we speak should be an expression of our faith in God. Some will try to get you to believe that since God can speak and cause things to happen just because he spoke it, that we have the same ability. Because you're made in the image of God, you can do everything God can do. That is not true. We are not God. There is one God, and that is him, and we are not it. After all, we are made in his image, aren't we, they say? He's a God. You're a God, aren't you? Uh, he has not given us ability to decree something and cause it to happen. It's kind of reminded me of the Midas touch story, how everything that king touched turned to gold. God's not that ignorant to give us all that power. I mean, think of all the things you've said in your life. Now you're th so thankful that didn't come to pass. <laughs> he, he's not that ignorant to give us that much power. We, uh, the words that we speak can bring uh, health and healing and encouragement to people, or we can curse. People use his name in vain all the time, and we're going to be judged for every idle word we speak. Those things are, are real and important, but it doesn't go to the next step of we have whatever. We can write our own ticket with God. That's who I used to sit under, and we could write our own ticket with God. We can do all this. You don't need God if you write your own tickets all the time. Again, the focus is on us, what we do. We're praying with ourselves. It's, it's a big, huge deception that's worldwide right now. Um, he has not given us the ability to decree something and cause it to happen. We can decree from here to eternity. You can say you're a millionaire a thousand million times. I decree this, I decree that. But if it doesn't happen, the decree is what? It's meaningless. It's meaningless. Prayer is not a place where we decree. It's a place where we ask. That's what prayer is. It's us asking. Come to the Lord humbly, asking, believing. We receive that he hears us. It's so simple that we've made it hard. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation or in everything by prayer and supplication or petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Philippians 4, 6. Do you see how this is twisted? Do you see how it's turned into now? It's another whole arena of we have so much authority. We are like God. I hope this is making sense. The main points, this is a, a, the latest fad in false doctrine, decreeing, decreeing and declaring, Number one, decreeing and declaring, do not make your prayers more powerful. Number two, it's based on a misinterpretation of three scriptures, and I explained those three scriptures. It's, it overestimates the authority Christ has given us. Decree and declare is based on our will, not God's will. Declare is a common word used in the Psalms to mean praise boast and proclaim what the Lord has done. That's the biblical meaning of declare. 
The Bible simply does not teach that we have any authority or power to decree and declare things to happen. Only God has such power. Instead, we ought to petition God for our daily bread to be supplied and our needs to be met. One is humble, the other is presumptuous. One is scriptural, and the other one is a passing fad. The decree and declare movement overestimates our authority. They believe that Jesus was given all authority and that we can speak and decree anything we want. Decree and declare is a false doctrine. Being made in the image of God does not mean we have the same abilities that God has. To be positive and repeat magical incantations or recited formulas to abstain something is not faith in God, it's faith in ourselves. Okay, let's talk about our words for a second. The use of words for positive confession. One may help or hurt someone by encouragement or condemnation. We are going to be held accountable, like I said, for our words. And that's why the Bible says, study to be quiet. <laughs> it takes some of us a lot of study. But to treat words as if they were some Star Wars type weapon by which reality is manipulated or altered is not biblical, but occultist, occultism. Let me read that again. The use of words for positive confession, one may help or hurt someone by encouragement or condemnation, but to treat words as if they were some kind of a Star Wars type weapon by which your reality is manipulated or altered is not biblical, but it's occultism. Uh, on a witchcraft uh, website, I'm going to quote this. It says, if you speak a fact into the universe, the universe will believe you and reinforce your statement. So we're getting into the law of attraction here. We're getting into witchcraft and we're getting into the occult, occultism, mysticism, all these other things. On a witchcraft website, it says, if you speak a fact into the universe, the universe will believe you and reinforce your statement. So what does this do? This is what occultism does. Make God impersonal. We believe in Christianity. He died for our sins. He's our Lord and our Savior. We believe in a personal relationship with him. Not he's our errand boy, our servant boy. We command him and tell him and demand what he does. That's impersonal and that is very demonic. Pride is believing in ourselves. The atheist denies the existence of God and elevates man into the Godhead. Example, you can change your world by changing your words. This has come into the megachurch television preachers. You can change everything, be positive, uh, live your best life now. Uh, yeah, you can when you're on top of the pyramid and all the money's coming to you. But what about the guy that's got to work and is doing all this and that and and things just don't happen to him because he's not up there on that top of the pyramid. Oh, I've seen all of it. Now we alter our prayer into an arrogant I statements that make prayer about us. I decree, I declare. It's all about us, not him. When we decree and declare, we are dictating to God. Okay, just a little bit more, hang on. Some occultive beliefs and this is the thing, occultism and witchcraft are seeping into the church little by little. Paganism is coming into the church in the name of Jesus. Just like the Bible says, things are going to happen in the end times. Deception is big. The occult believes in self-deification or in throne worship, self, um, celebrities, uh, Hollywood stars, that hero worship, and it's also happened and did back in the day. I don't know if it's still going on now, but it's uh, treating preachers and ministers like gods. The occult thrives on man's preoccupation with themselves. And you go and you hear sermons about how you can be rich and how you can be famous and how you can be this and that. That is not Christianity. That's paganism coming in on a stick. <laughs> Self-deification is the gospel of the new age. 
Each person is seen as divine. Now, Anton LaVey, the Church of Satan, a quote from him, listen to this. Life is the great indulgence. Death, the great abstinence. Therefore, make the most of life here and now. They don't believe in hell. They don't believe in the afterlife. How many preachers you're hearing now don't talk about hell? They don't talk about repentance. They don't talk about sin. Because little by little, we're bringing in these beliefs. Life is the great indulgence. Death, the great abstinence. Therefore, make the most of life here and now. Well, as Christians, we believe there is an eternity. That we are eternal beings. That when we lay down this body, whatever way, whatever happens, our spirit goes on into the future, into the forever, for, to be with the Lord. Self-worship rather than the patience and faith in God worship. They don't believe in God. So many people I hear just don't believe in God. How can they not believe in God? <clears throat> it takes more faith not to believe, I think. <laughs> it's just, okay, God is their servant boy. When they're decreeing and declaring and you're doing all this, God is your servant boy. This is self-worship. This is not biblical Christianity. This is a false doctrine. It represents, or it results in self-centered prayers. I thank you that I am not like this publican. I thank you that I am not going to have a bad circumstance. I thank you that I am not, just like in Luke 18 here. Uh, it represents self-centered prayers, name it, claim it, theology, or health, wealth, prosperity, gospel. Decree and declare movements are man-centered rather than God-centered. Self-worship is bowing to himself. Uh, and lastly here, in occult, the occult beliefs, they depersonalize God into magical thinking, self-worship, depersonalization of God. The occultist looks deep inside himself for a force. Remember when we used to hear in the faith message the force of faith? This is all part of this false doctrine. It's, it's not a force. Faith is a relationship word to have a relationship with the Lord, not a force the force of faith rather than a personal and caring God. So this, all these doctrines, what they do is they make you look to yourself. There's such a heavy burden on you to have to say these babbling formulas every day. <laughs> and you better make sure they're right because if you said a wrong one, well, the negative universe is going to come and get you. It's going to get you. The thing you feared is coming on you. It's coming right now. That's another whole sermon. So let me close here. Seven steps and formulas. This God is seen rather as a principle or a force. Something depersonalized. This is witchcraft. This is occultism. This is Gnosticism. The place of God is filled with something impersonal. Your words now. Uh, someone that I used to run around with preaching and stuff, they, your, the answer is right below your nose. In other words, you have the power to create whatever you want. This reduces Christian living to a robotic duty, to a vending machine to be manipulated to get results. We put God in a box so we can control him and have entered self-chosen paths. We make our own rules. Aren't you glad that he tells us to ask. In closing, he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, which saying they were righteous and despised others. Because what happens when you start decreeing and declaring and you are this and that, you look down on everyone else. There's this pride that comes that you have the power to control your own destiny with what you say, your word. This is nothing but the law of attraction. Come in Christian clothes that's deceiving masses. Let's stay with the Bible and take those three scriptures and go read them for yourself. Go research for yourself. Go start looking at articles on this. If you're in this movement, you need to study to get out of it. The reason why most people do not get out of false doctrine is they don't study. They don't research. They just go with the latest fad. It sounds good. I want to, it looks like I really can pray good. All these things, but you got to study to show yourself approved. And if it's popular, it's probably not God. 
And if it's on TV, it's probably not God either because they paid a price to get there and it's not the price that God wants us to. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We don't want to be as this publican and these uh, people that are, or this Pharisee that's praying with himself. We want to be like the one that's, that realizes we need mercy. We need grace. We need your hand in our life. We need your wisdom. We need your strength. Because we thank you, Father, that when you're with us, we can do things, but it's you doing it through us. You're giving the strength to go through it. You're giving us the wisdom to go through. Even these dark days that we're facing, Father, you are the light, and we walk in the light. We put our faith in you. And Father, I thank you. You haven't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. That's what you said, so we can say what you said, that you're giving us a sound mind, and we thank you for it. Keep us humble, Lord, in your word so we don't step over the bounds of so-called authority and taking advantage of things and stepping into ditches and moving into the old cult and rich craft. We promise alone to give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison, and also her backup channel, Roberta Morrison 2. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her. Be sure to check out her YouTube playlist for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org webpage and click on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported. On the main webpage at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>